Do you often get confused with this term BSP? Or you have an idea about the BSP, but you are exactly not sure what the BSP is, where it is located. Or you might have even tried Googling around, but while Googling around, you might have found several different definitions of the BSP. And rather than resolving your confusion, it confused you even more. If your answer is yes to any of these queries, you are at the right place because I'm going to tell you about the BSP in a very simple terms. Hi everyone, I'm Pradeep Tewani. I'm a trainer and consultant. To know more about me and the courses which I offer, look into the description for this video. Now we will right away jump onto our core topic called Boat Support Packages. All right, so what is boat support packages? So I would like you to think from the very simple perspective of microcontroller. Being an embedded system engineer, of course, we would have worked on some of the microcontroller, be it like an AVR-based microcontroller, E051 microcontroller, or STM32 microcontroller. So we might be very well versed about this microcontroller and what all things are involved over here. So I'm going to explain you about the BSPs from the microcontroller perspective. Now, just think of it like if you want to work on the microcontroller, if you want to just boot up your microcontroller, what all things do you need? The very first thing which you might be aware and you need for the microcontroller is something called the startup code. Now, what is the startup code? Startup code is basically the very first code which is being run as soon as your microcontroller is powered up and it does the basic initialization for your microcontroller. So for example, you might be setting up the reset vectors over there. You might also be doing uh, the stuff related to initializing the BSS, non-BSS segments. And then you might be doing something related to the cache. Probably if there is a cache, you will flush the cache. So all those kind of initializations, such as like a stack pointer initializations, all those things you will be doing in the startup code. To know more about the um, to know more about this startup code, you may look and search for the STM32 microcontroller startup code, which is being explained in a very crystal manner. I would also put the link for the same in the description, so refer the description. Next, what you will be needing for your S microcontroller is something like setting up the clocking requirements. So as you know, in your microcontroller, you have some buses, like if you see STM32 microcontroller, you have the APB bus, AHB bus, and all those things. So those clock needs to be initialized. Apart from this, there would be some peripherals. So peripheral clocks needs to be initialized, some PLL related stuff to be initialized. So that is the second thing which you will be needing for a typical microcontroller. The third thing which you will be needing, of course, which is very important from the board developers board uh, BSP perspective is setting up the pin muxing. Now, what is pin muxing? Pin muxing, as you know, is something like a single pin can be used for the multiple purposes. Let's say a single pin for the microcontroller can be used for the I2C, can be used for the SPI, can be used for the GPIO. Now, depending on what you have actually connected over that pin, you need to configure that accordingly. So that's what we call it as set, uh, setting the pin muxing and it is very, very board specific. So you will have to refer to the schematic of the board, hardware reference manual of the board and you have to do the things accordingly. Final thing which you might have to do is basically you will have to write a respective driver. Say for example, you have the e square drum or LED, then you would have to write the driver corresponding to the components or the peripherals which you have on your board. So that's what you typically do with a microcontroller. And of course, then there will be your application which will be doing the, which will be satisfying the requirements of the customer. Now, keeping all these things in mind, we will right away jump to the boot support packages. So again, keep in mind what you have understood regarding the microcontroller. So on the similar lines, we will try to understand this stuff. So if you understand overall, if you uh, if you look at your board, 
the basic component which you will be having on your board would be the CPU. So of course your CPU also needs to be initialized. Initialized. So for initializing the CPU, what you have is again the startup code, which may be uh, which might include something like uh, confirming on what CPU you are running, then confirming the caches related stuff. Uh, initializing the caches related stuff. So all those things will be there in the startup code. And of course, when you move on to the Linux kernel, you have the virtual addressing. So you have the MMU so that MMU needs to be initialized as well. So all these things constitute the startup code. Apart from this, what you will be needing, as you know, when you will be in a multi-processing environment, multitasking environment, you basically switch among the processes. So when you basically switch from one process to another process, what you require is the context saving and the context restoring. So that kind of thing is being done by something called the dispatcher. Now, once you have basically done all this dispatcher related stuff, next thing you will might be needing, you might have to set up the exception and the interrupt handling. So you basically will have to write some handlers. You might need to have a code related to interrupt handling. So all those things are the CPU related stuff. So CPU is the core component, which uh, component of your board. Now, as you understand, this particular CPU is being incorporated in any of the SOCs. Let's say there is a T SOC from the TI. There is a chip from the TI which incorporates, let's say, ARM v7 CPU core. Now, what all things you will be needing for the SOC? So if you ask me, whatever we discussed about the CPU, we call them as a CPU dependent BSP. So overall, if you ask me, there are three categories of BSP. One of them, the first one of them is something like a CPU dependent BSP. Now, as you understand, the CPU sits on your SOC. Around this, you will be having the various peripheral, the buses which have been designed by the SOC vendor. So what will be done over here is you will be needing again some clock related initialization. So let's say you have the buses, you have the peripherals, those clocks needs to be initialized, peripheral clocks uh, accordingly needs to be initialized as per the speed. Then you will have something like a power related things. You might have to power gate something, whatever that peripheral you might have to use. So all those things which are specific to the SOC, you can call them as a SOC dependent PSP. So all that low level code, which is specific to the SOC, we call it as a SOC dependent PSP. Now this SOC will be seated on your board. And of course, another thing which you will be having is the various IPs, the controllers, drivers. So for example, you have the I2C engine, the SPI engine and all those things. So you might need the drivers for that as well. Now, this SOC sits on your board. So let's say we are talking about the Beagle Bone Black. Now, what all things you will have on the board? So probably you might have the audio codec, you might have something called the e -square prom. you might have the RTC, you might have the Ethernet. So don't you need the driver for that? Of course, yes. So you will be needing a board related drivers. Similarly, you might have the RAM, that RAM needs to be initialized. Then you might have the storage, let's say you have some flash or you have something called the EMMC that needs to be initialized. So all these things basically form a board dependent BSP. So to summarize, overall you have three types of board support packages. One which is for the CPU, which we call it as a CPU dependent BSP. Then you have something called the SOC dependent BSP, and then you have the board dependent BSP. Now, what exactly is this BSP? So from this particular uh, discussion, which we had so far, I can say BSP or the board support packages is nothing but the collection of the drivers, the utilities, specific to the target platform in hand. So it's all the low level code which you require to bring your board up so that a user can work on that. It is typically being provided by the board vendors. And if you are owning your own, if you have your own board, you will need to start with a reference BSP and you need to accordingly write a code for that.
So to summarize, boot support packages is nothing but all the low level code which you need to in, which is specific to the platform and which is required to bring that platform up. Now BSP is something like very, very specific to the platform. So what do I mean by that is you can't take one BSP and you can expect directly to work on another board. So that is how they are very, very board specific. That's the reason we call it as a board support packages. Now, another question which I have seen, like most of the guys get confused with is where is the BSP located? Now, this might be the question which might be bothering everyone because there are most of the uh, most of the guys uh, are being misled by what the BSP is. Typically from the vendors, you might be getting something which they call it as a BSP, where they include the tool chain as a part of the BSP. They might be including various patches as a part of BSP. But we are not able to understand like where is the BSP located. Some of the guys have the misconception that BSP is a separate thing which you need to basically write and you need to put it. But here I'm going to tell you that BSP will be the part of your bootloaders. So in the bootloader, you need the low level code. That is what the BSP is. Similarly, if you see the kernel, don't you need the startup code? Don't you need the um, uh, SOC specific code in the kernel? Of course you need there, um, need there as well. So BSP will be there in your kernel, in your bootloaders, whatever code you write, which uh, whatever code has to run, it has to run on the top of the BSP. So BSP is a part of your kernel, the bootloaders like that. So hope I was able to answer all the queries related to the BSP. If you guys have any confusions related to this BSP, please put it in the comment box. I would be able to help you out. And of course, like whatever queries, whatever other topics you would like me to cover, let me know in the comment box so that I can help you with those topics as well. So that's it for this particular video. Thank you very much. Stay in touch. Bye-bye.